Hello, welcome to Ilford High Road Baptist Church. If you've been following along over recent weeks with us, uh, you'll know we're doing a series in 1 Thessalonians. Well, this week we're going to take a break from that. Uh, we're going to pause and pick up a harvest theme together this week. Uh, as a church, we have a partnership with Red Balloon, a, a local youth and families organisation through whom we have a youth worker with us at the church and our children and young people in their online groups this weekend are going to be picking up a harvest theme. And so we're going to use one of the same passages that they are using. Today you'll also hear mention in our prayers and in the preaching of something called the Welcome Centre. And many years ago this was established by uh, the church here as a drop-in place for people who are on the streets. And over the last 20, 30 years that ministry has uh, developed and expanded significantly. Uh, but as a church, we uh, still support that ministry very much, and particularly at Harvest with our gifts and our prayers. It's just one of the occasions through the year in which we do that. But that's the Welcome Centre still providing a place for the homeless and those who are on the streets, providing uh, food, providing a place out of the rain, providing a place where they can have a shower, and providing help hopefully we pray, to get back into uh, mainstream life of our community. Our reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 20, starting at verse 1. The kingdom of heaven is like this. Once there was a man who went out early in the morning to hire some men to work in his vineyard. He agreed to pay them the regular wage, a silver coin a day and sent them to work in his vineyard. He went out again to the marketplace at nine o'clock and saw some men standing there doing nothing. So he told them, you also go and work in the vineyard and I will pay you a fair wage. So they went. Then at 12 o'clock and again at three o'clock, he did the same thing. It was nearly five o'clock when he went to the marketplace and saw some other men still standing there. Why are you wasting the whole day doing nothing, he asked them. No one hired us, they answered. Well then, you also go and work in the vineyard, he told them. When evening came, the owner told his foreman, call the workers and pay them their wages, starting with those that were hired last and ending with those that were hired first. The men who had begun to work at five o'clock were paid a silver coin each. So when the men who were first to be hired came to be paid, they thought they would get more. But they too were given a silver coin each. They took their money and started grumbling against the employer. These men who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, while we put up with a whole day's work in the hot sun, yet you paid them the same as you paid us. Listen, friend, the owner answered one of them. I have not cheated you. After all, you agreed to do a day's work for one silver coin. Now take your pay and go home. I want to give this man who hired last as much as I have given you. Don't I have the right to do so as I wish with my own money? Or are you jealous because I'm generous? And Jesus concluded, so those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. Harvest is a celebration of God's good gifts to us. But it's more than just giving thanks for a loaf of bread, a pint of milk, or a basket of fresh strawberries. Harvest is also a celebration of all the talents and the gifts that we bring into our everyday work. And that contributes to the abundance of life. And so it includes the compassion of a nurse, the advice of a counsellor, and the competency of a project manager. And this parable of Jesus about workers in the vineyard reminds us of the many ways in which God brings a harvest of good things into our lives, not just through the food that we eat. It points us to the blessing, the harvest of blessing that we can bring into the lives of others as we bear much fruit through godly character. The parable, in some ways, is not easy to understand. 
Maybe our first thought is something like, count me in with the group that turns up an hour before the close of business in time for a cup of tea before we clock off and go home rejoicing. But is it really that good? What is it like to be out of work? Can many people face that prospect today? It's not a lot of fun. Losing work means other losses too, and not just the financial ones. We might feel we lose that sense of daily purposeful activity, or the loss of our professional identity and standing. We might lose a social network and friends that we have in our workplace, or maybe deeply the sense of self-esteem and self-confidence. And so work truly is a blessing. A gift to us from God. And through it, we bring a harvest of blessing into the lives of others, not just, as we say, earn our living. Let's begin by thinking of God's blessing to us in the gifts of the harvest. Although it's not the main point of the parable, nevertheless, the purpose of a vineyard clearly is year by year to enjoy a harvest of grapes. Leon Morris suggests that perhaps the owner goes out several times in the day because it is the time of harvest. The grapes have ripened, and he needs many laborers to pick them before they begin to spoil in the heat of the day. When grapes ripen, when we gather in the harvest in every form, then it really is true that we enjoy the blessing of God. Indeed, this is how God has set up the world that he created to provide us with everything that we need. How perfect his order of creation as we find it in the book of Genesis. God brings light. Then God separates land and sea. God creates trees and plants on the land. He creates the sun and the moon and the stars within the skies. And then he fills the seas. Only then does he create animals upon the land. And finally, you and I. It's when all else has been prepared and is ready that he makes us. To live in and to enjoy the world that he has made. Here again, the instructions of God for the land and the trees. Genesis 1, verse 11. Let the land produce vegetation. Let it produce seed-bearing plants and trees that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And then the description in Genesis 2 of the garden. The Lord had planted a garden in Eden, and there God made all kinds of trees to grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye, and good for food. Yes, harvest is indeed God's blessing to us. And so it is for that reason that the Psalms rejoice in and, and celebrate God's goodness. They give us an example to follow, and helpfully they give us words that we can use too to express our gratitude and to give honor to God for all that he provides. Hear the words in Psalm 65 and verse 9. You, Lord, care for the land and you water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. Notice here, God makes this happen. The Lord does this. Here is God's care. Here is God's provision. Here is God's abundance. This is the way that God ordains it. God's blessing to us in the harvest. And therefore, in the book of Deuteronomy, the Lord reminds his people of the importance of giving thanks. This is what God says. When you have eaten and you are satisfied, praise the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, for then your heart will become proud. You may say to yourself, my power, my strength, my hands have produced this wealth for me. But remember the Lord your God. It is he who gives you the ability. And therefore we are right at harvest, when first we give our praise and glory to God for the harvest of every year. But we are right too when we thank God for the gift of work that enables us to produce and to contribute in so many ways. And right when 
like the owner of the vineyard in Jesus' parable, we consider also the needs of the poor. So let's come more closely to the parable and consider, secondly today, God's blessing in the gift of work. And let's consider first, under this heading, the ability and the opportunity of work. In first century Palestine, some people owned houses, some people had land. If they had a lot of land, then we understand they would need workers. Now, some people belonged to, like an extended householder, almost belonging to the family, and so they were assured of steady work through the year. There were others who did not enjoy that security. And so they hired themselves out as laborers for a daily wage. Hence, in this parable, when the vineyard owner goes down to the market several times during the day, there are people hanging around hoping even just for a little bit of work. It shows how desperate some people were for a little bit of work in order to survive. Because as a day worker, they never knew whether that opportunity would come to earn a living or not. Now, you might think that being a grape picker doesn't really need a huge range of skills. You just pick the grapes off the vine and put them into a basket, and that's it. Of course, some care is needed, not to spoil other plants or to tread on the vines, but, yes, it is a fairly straightforward job. But it matters. It makes a difference. And so too does everything that we do. And therefore, I want to say to you, don't look down on whatever it is that you do as if it doesn't matter. If you say, well, I'm just a grandma reading a story. I'm only an auntie taking nephews to the park. I'm simply a friend picking up a prescription for a neighbor. All of those things matter. All of those activities make a difference for someone else. And indeed, everything that we do can be a source of blessing to others. So harvest is a time to celebrate all that we do through the year. That brings a harvest of blessing into the lives of other people. Rightly, we give thanks to God for the work of the farmer looking after livestock or growing wheat and barley. We thank God for the orchards and the vineyards that produce such varieties of fruit. We give thanks to the fishermen who go out on the seas and bring back our favorite piece of cod or haddock or whatever else it is that we like with our chips. But life is more than food. And harvest is more than bringing in the sheep. In life, we need clothes to wear. We need shoes for our feet. We need a home in which to live. We need a car, perhaps, to get us to work. We need an engineer when we have a problem with the gas especially if it's the boiler in November. And therefore, harvest is also a time for us to give thanks to God for those who make that comfortable pair of shoes, the builder who builds that secure house, the reliable, trustworthy mechanic who makes sure my car is safe to drive, and the engineer who's qualified and knows what she's doing. All of those gifts make a difference. They matter. They help and bless us in life. Those jobs and most others too. How grateful parents are for the reassurance that a health visitor brings about our little one. How grateful we are for the kindly words of our counselor, the integrity and honesty of our lawyer, the skill of our designer, the extra help sometimes of a teacher, the police officer on our streets, the patience of our music instructor when we keep hitting the wrong notes, the skill of a chef creating those tasty dishes, the knowledge of our IT consultant who makes the impossible happen with crazy computers. Perhaps I've missed out your skill set or the tasks that you do from day to day, whether they're paid for them or you do it voluntarily. Let me know so that we include them in future occasions. Because whatever our ability, this is how God has made us. This is how we contribute to our family and to our community. It makes a difference. It blesses others. 
And so harvest is the time to remember and thank God for the gifts of those around us. Because all of us, whoever we are, wherever we are day by day, and whatever it is that we do, everything can and should be done for the glory of God and the blessing of others. The vineyard owner gave an opportunity to work in his vineyard. And we need to see life as the Lord giving us an opportunity to work with him in his world. Now, that doesn't really mean that the Lord is going to come at night to each of us in a vision and say, hey, come and work with me in my bakery or my corner shop. How about joining me in my laundry or my garden centre? Or come and stay with me in my library, my surgery, at my farm or in my bank. What it means is that when we know what we're good at, And when we know what we enjoy doing, that can at least give us a little bit of a hint as to where the Lord might want to be at work with us and working through us. It's for this reason that Paul says, in all that you do, in all that you do day by day, work at it with all of your heart as working for the Lord. And when we do that, then we begin to do what the scripture says, which is to love God with all of our strength. So, as we look at this parable here, and we think about the abilities, the opportunities to work, what, what godly character can we see that we should model wherever we are? What examples of holiness can we find that will honor the Lord on our front lines? And what Christ-like ways can we see that will be pleasing to God and bring blessing to others? Let's consider several qualities that we can develop in our work and in all that we do day by day. Remember, the parable is not really about economics. It's not about how to run a business. The parable is about God's kindness that actually we can never deserve. And yet as we hear the words of the vineyard owner, as we listen to the words of the first group of workers who got that opportunity and put in a long, hard day, we get a glimpse into their hearts. We see something of the character to avoid and the character that Paul says to the Thessalonian church they need to mimic. First of those is that we should aim for gratitude rather than grumbling. Now it's it's hard, isn't it, to be too critical of that first group of workers. True, they accepted the offer of the job, they agreed the wages, and they they got what had been agreed. But haven't we all had that kind of day when work has been hard going? The end of it, we're exhausted, mentally as well as physically. And then there's not even a word of thank you for staying back late. We simply feel taken for granted. And then we discover that the new part-time casual hours worker who started last Friday, getting what we're paid to. That last bit, highly unlikely, but then Jesus' parable is not about describing the economics of a workplace. It's told to take us by surprise and to make us stop and think. It's told to highlight the kindness and the grace of the vineyard owner. It's not about being paid for the work that we do. It's about realizing that at least at times we all belong in that last group. We don't deserve God's grace. But as we listen to these workers, we we hear them grumbling. And Jesus says they went on grumbling, muttering under their breath, saying to each other, this isn't fair, this isn't right. And in one way we sympathize. In another, we know that there are moments when we grumble too, when we ought to be grateful. And not least in these days when many have been put out of work, others are feeling great insecurity about their work and businesses are going to the wall. We ought indeed to be grateful if we have a job. We may love it, or we may hate it at the moment, but at least we have one. So, wherever we are this week, whatever task that we have to do, whether in work or as a volunteer, let us be grateful to God for the way that he's made us, and let us think about ways in which we can bring a harvest of blessing into the lives of others. Gratefulness rather than grumbling. And then I see that we should practice humility rather than pride. 
Now, the first group of workers will tell us they're upset because things are just not fair. The truth is, they thought they deserved more money than those who had worked for a few moments at the end of the day. And their words, again, show us something deeper within their hearts. When they received only what the others had been given, they said, these last, they only work for one hour, but you have made them equal to us, equal to us, who worked so hard all day in the hot sun. How can you put them on a level with us? Sometimes in our workplace, I guess we can feel a bit inferior to others. At other moments, maybe we think we're better than others. Now, of course, in the workplace, some people do have more knowledge, more experience. And if that is us, then how well do we treat those around us? If we're the leader of a team or the manager of the office, how can we make sure that all of our team feel that they have a contribution to make? And we can do that by working with humility rather than pride. When I worked for a few years in a bank, they, one of my first managers spent most of his day in his office and he used the internal phone system if he wanted to ask us to do something. My second manager was quite different. Frequently he would come out, he would find us, and he would talk with us face to face if he wanted us to go and find some information or if he simply wanted us to print something off for the customer. At which point he would thank us for doing so. And at the end of a busy day, if we had got something wrong and couldn't quite balance the books, he knew how to help us go through it all and find the solution. His was the leadership with real humility. And he was the manager for whom we had great respect. So wherever we are this week, Whatever task we have to do, let us do it as serving the Lord. And therefore in a way that can bring a harvest of blessing into the lives of others. As we practice humility rather than pride. And then in this parable, I see that we can learn to demonstrate compassion rather than greed. Just why did this vineyard owner give a full day's wages? to those who had worked for just one hour. I mean, didn't he know that it would cause trouble? Surely he understood that it was bound to stir up resentment. If you want to talk economics, then we know that elsewhere Jesus says that a worker deserves their wages. James says that God sees and notices when the harvester is treated badly and not paid properly. But this parable isn't about proper working practices. This parable is about the compassion and the kindness of God that we don't deserve. And which is illustrated most clearly in his treatment of the group who work just for an hour. If you want to think about paying proper wages, and if you want to use those terms, then stick with the first group who agreed a day's wage and then they got it. If you want to understand the parable, then hear what the owner of the vineyard says to that group. Are you envious because I am generous? Reminds me of that lovely psalm that says, the Lord does not treat us as our sins deserve. Rather, he is like a father who has compassion because he knows how we are formed. And so, wherever we are this week, and whatever task we have to do, using the abilities that God has given to us, let's consider how we can show compassion to others that will bring a harvest of blessing to them. Finally, in this parable, I see that the Lord wants us to show concern for others, not just ourselves. Again, it is hard to criticize this first group of workers. We can understand their complaints. But their words do show us that really they're interested in themselves rather than in others. I hope that's not too harsh. By contrast, we see the heart of the owner. Why does he give the whole of a day's wages when a few of them had worked just 
by an hour. Again, I say it's because Jesus is teaching us that we can never deserve his grace. The vineyard owner is acting with great concern, particularly for these last workers. He knows that if they are still waiting for work at the 11th hour, then they are needy. He knows that if they can find just a little bit of work, it might be enough to put something on the table to feed their families that very night. He's concerned. He was in a position to help. And so he did so. And as a church and as individuals, we also have that opportunity today to help others through our Welcome Centre project. In a few moments, we'll pray for that ministry. And in the news sheet, there is a list of items that would be really useful as they help others. And if you'd like to, to give in some way as an expression of gratitude to God for what he has blessed you with and out of concern for others, then Use that list, and Ursula and Sonia and the, the rest of the team will be delighted to see you. Whatever we are this week, and whatever task that we have to do, may the Lord help us to have and to show a concern for those around us. Our students, our patients, our customers, our bus driver, our shopkeeper, our rubbish collectors, our family, our neighbours, our friends. And so may we bring a harvest of blessing into their lives. Harvest is a time to celebrate God's gifts to us in the food that we enjoy and in the abilities that we use day by day for the benefit of others. Therefore, we celebrate harvest when we bring our thanks to God in praise, for it is right to honour the Lord of the harvest. We celebrate the harvest with kindness in our giving, as we share something of God's concern for those who are in need. And we celebrate harvest when we dedicate ourselves again and all that we do, that in everything we might love God with all of our strength and by his grace bring a harvest of blessing into the lives of those around us. Let's celebrate harvest this year. Amen. Let's come, let's ring our prayers. Heavenly Father, we would indeed start with bringing our praise. Who are we that the God of all the earth, the creator of everything that's around us, should love us and care for us, should love us beyond measure, should show compassion and forgiveness and kindness. And yet, Father, that is your very nature. And so we come and we bring our praise. We want to thank you for the faithfulness of God that we see with the seasons. For indeed, we recognize that although at times we moan of the weather, you provide that that we need, both to feed ourselves, indeed to sustain us. We want to thank you that it is indeed a world of beauty and variety. We want to thank you that you have placed us in a situation where we have families and friends. Father, we recognize that for many that might be difficult, but we also should not forget to thank you when we do have family and friends. Father, we want to thank you that here in the UK you have indeed given us a country that is not at war, that has peace. And Father, we would pray for those who live in our world's war zones, whether it is a declared war or whether it is a civil war. We recognize that there are many that have had to flee from their homes. We recognize there are many that are uncertain about tomorrow's meal. We recognize there are many that have lost what was a stable employment. And so, Father, we come and we pray for those at this time. Father, we want to thank you that it is not our circumstances that make us valuable to you. It is the fact that you have created us and that we are made in your image. 
we want to thank you that you value all life. We want to pray for those that are helping, those that are helping to recamp those in Lesbos, those who are fighting fires in California and putting out the homeless, those that are indeed coping with an enormously high load of COVID. Father, we want to thank you for that you have called people to help at this time of great need within our world. Father, for ourselves, we want to thank you for the roles that we have, whether it's paid or whether it's unpaid. We want to thank you that you have placed us in a country which, to a greater or lesser extent, will support us, that will help us find new roles new jobs if we need it. You have placed us with family and friends who care, who support. You have given the responsibility to our government indeed to work with its citizens in finding employment, in making sure that all of us within this country indeed have a measure of success that sustains us. Father, we want to pray for those who need work at this time. We would want to pray for our government as it considers what support should or should not be given and to whom. We would pray for those who are in a position of employing that indeed they might be generous and wise and sensible. Father, for ourselves, we ask that you help us to bless others. Here from this Christian community, we have the real privilege of being able to serve the homeless. Father, we want to thank you for Sonia. We want to thank you for those that work within our Welcome Centre. Father, we want to thank you that we indeed have the privilege of being able to support them both in prayer and in practical ways not only at harvest time but throughout the year that indeed we can and do take a very real active interest in the work that they do in the way they show kindness and compassion and patience with those that need so much help at this moment in time. And so, Father, we want to thank you for this opportunity of harvest, that opportunity that allows us in a very practical way to show love to others because you have loved us. Father, how love comes because you have loved us. May it be that in all that we do, we show our dedication to you. We try to express something of the love, the compassion, the kindness, the forgiveness that you have shown us. And so, Father, we commit ourselves, we commit our town, particularly at this moment in time when they say that COVID is rising. We pray for those that are bringing help in all sorts of practical ways, both here and abroad. And we ask your blessing. Amen.